Do I add clouds? Should I add a rainbow? Do I add florals in the foreground? Should I make the background a landscape? Should I leave it a single color? I mean, there's so many options and it's so difficult to know which one to choose to complement the pet or wildlife painting we're trying to create. Hello or welcome back to those of you who are new. My name is Lauren with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art and I help creatives master acrylic pet and wildlife art while reducing stress. So in my brand new sketchbook snack series, we're gonna to touch on this topic about choosing backgrounds, which we can easily explore in our sketchbooks. And I'll be doing that as I walk you through a step-by-step -step galaxy scene with the Northern Lights, just like what we recently saw in the magnetic storm. I'll also be highlighting some special artist tips, going over the techniques I use in painting these kind of backgrounds. All right, creatives, without further ado, let's get started. All right, now this is up to you, but I tore out a page from my mixed media sketchbook. I've actually ruined sketchbooks by painting inside of them, so I choose to tape them down to a wooden sketching board. And here I'll separate the page in half by placing another piece of painter's tape in the center. Now my first tip to really get these lights glowing in that dark sky is to use fluorescent paint colors. Now I didn't use all fluorescents, but the ones I did were fluorescent pink and fluorescent blue by Liquid X. The other colors include cadmium yellow, phalocyanin blue, violet, burnt umber, and black and white. Now once your paper is taped down, whether that's in your sketchbook or on a hard surface, I'm gonna mix up with my palette knife, phalocyanin blue, burnt umber, and violet. Not black, I'm not gonna start with black because we're actually gonna use black for the tree in the corner. We'll talk a little bit more about why I never recommend just pulling paint straight from the bottle to paint backgrounds. Plus those lights will light up the sky so it's not gonna be all black. Then with a the clean damp brush, we're gonna cover this entire little rectangle with that color. But here's also something I do. I don't make it one even coat of one color. I add a little bit more purple in some areas or a little bit more phalocyanin blue into this dark color. If you missed it, I also added just a hint of white. It really helps to lighten up those purples, but not too much, and same with the blues. So I have this variation of brownish indigo, some areas more purple, some areas more blue. And that's also why I didn't grab my largest Arteza brush. I'm using the Arteza size six flat brush from the variety pack, using the medium width of this flat brush to create these very loose, back and forth, wispy brush strokes. Now, when it comes to choosing backgrounds, I often wanna draw attention to the animal. That's part of the story I'm telling, that character is the animal that I'm painting. So the question I often ask myself is, what background will help me draw attention to this animal? And what elements can I include in the background that will help me elicit the feeling I'm trying to capture, such as joy or hope or even sadness or fear, etc. Now, some things you wanna avoid when it comes to choosing backgrounds is you wanna avoid confusing the viewer or cluttering the background or using competing values so then the animal gets lost in the background. And this is definitely why I like to test things out in my sketchbook. Now, if you've really been struggling to come up with inspiration and ideas for backgrounds, I have what's called the Original Animal Artists Course and Monthly Challenge, designed to help creatives harness the ugly phases of life to create their most authentic originals that emerge a unique artist style. So each month, students will use a basic sketchbook as both a visual journal and to develop ideas. That includes exploring common pet and wildlife environments, building balanced compositions, and color palettes that create unity in a painting. So this takes the techniques that I teach in my master class and merges it with my five-step creativity system. So if you'd like to learn how to turn those ugly sketches and use those ugly parts of your story to make your best original art, I invite you to check out the Original Animal Artist Course and Monthly Challenge, linked down below. 
Now those on the waiting list will be the first to receive my early bird rates, which will only last for a few days until the regular prices kick in. All right, guys, let's get back to this background. Make sure you save a bit of this color because we'll be pulling it in to the northern lights. And once you're finished here, let it dry for five, 10 minutes, and then we'll add the stars. All right, so once that's tacky or better yet dry, I'm gonna grab a 2-0 spot brush to apply the stars, but you can use your uh, palette knife or brush to mix up a light gray. Now we're always thinking back to front. If we made our stars bright white right off the bat, that's a, either a very large bright star or it's closer to the viewer. So we wanna start with a light gray. So add a bit of black to your white and with a very thin amount just on the tip of your brush, you don't wanna load your brush with paint here. You just wanna add a little tiny bit of pressure to create the smallest little dots scattered sporadically some stars are going to be close together some stars are going to be larger than others and you're welcome to add stars to the lower right corner but just know we're going to be covering that area up with a tree now i want to elaborate a little bit more on why i use fluorescent colors and some other background ideas that you can use those paints with and also why I choose not to use just black to paint a galaxy scene like this. So fluorescent acrylic paint is great because it creates this glow and they're colors that absorb and reflect more light than conventional colors. And so it's brighter, it's bolder, and it's a great paint to use on top when we're painting things like fire or even little fireflies in the night or in a dark underwater ocean scene, a glow from like a jellyfish or an underwater animal, or even a candlelight in a dark room, or something during the day like a sun in a beautiful sunset scene, or a glowing rainbow. You always wanna think about how to add more interest to your painting with, like I said, without making it confusing or overly cluttered or competing with the animal. All right, so in my painting, still using my size one round brush, I'm, I'm gonna use just black in this lower right corner as a little test here. I'm kind of making like this real loose beginnings of a tree because I wanna see if I've made the sky not too dark, but also not too light. You can even just add a little dot in this corner or just do what I'm doing. We're not gonna finish the tree right now. I just wanna make sure that the background is correct in value and color and it is you want the tree to be darker and way more shaded than our sky now this is the rare instance very rare that i would take just straight black out of the paint bottle in a night sky like this it's never just going to be all black because of light pollution plus a bit of light from the stars and in a magnetic storm that we recently experienced we're definitely gonna have more light. And this is also just not interesting. Using color straight out of the bottle is not interesting. It doesn't add intensity, it doesn't add diversity. It often lacks that wow factor that we're trying to get in our paintings to draw in the viewers. All right, so I've just added fluorescent pink to my paint palette. Now I did do a previous little rectangle above this one, so a lot of colors have been already mixed on my paint palette, but watch me carefully as I mix up our colors for a glaze for these northern lights, these auroras, so hard to say, over top our galaxy. So what I do is I, I'm gonna mix up white with fluorescent pink and add lots of clean water to it. You definitely don't wanna be diluting these colors with mucky water. Then for the next color, using a clean brush that I've washed out, I'm gonna use sky blue and cadmium yellow and add lots of water to that too. Now I attempted to mix a violet that didn't work out, so we're gonna try again. I'm using some fluorescent pink with fluorescent blue, mixing that up with a little bit of white and adding water to it. Now you'll need to add a good amount of blue to it so that it does turn into a violet. Otherwise it becomes kind of like 
more of a magenta. So once you add clean water to that as well, the next color we'll mix is phthalo cyanum blue with a bit of white and adding lots of water to that too. Alright, so for this part, I recommend you watch me and then give it a try. Now, a lot of you know I use Arteza brushes for all my pet portraits and wildlife painting tutorials, so I have them linked down below, but I'm using right now the size one round brush from the Arteza pack, but I don't recommend that. I recommend the Filbert brush from the Variety Arteza brush pack, the size seven Filbert brush. Brush really matters for this technique because you see how I'm creating these very thin pointy lines? We don't want that. We actually want this spread out thick brush strokes that kind of blend together nicely with a very thin amount of paint. So learn from my mistakes here. I'll be switching to that brush soon. But what I'm also doing is I'm also bringing in a bit of the background color, which I had mentioned before to keep. Keep that wet because we bring in a little bit of that as we're adding these colors. And if you added enough water, these should be translucent colors. We should be able to see through these colors once they dry for a second or two. And we want to work wet and wet. That's the technique I'm as I move from right to left, I'm gonna start pulling in more of these colors. And that's what I did with the fluorescent pink. I blended that into a corner of the blue. So here I go with my filbert brush. It allows me to cover more surface area get these thicker brush strokes and really push that paint around and thin it out even more. Now my technique here is vertical brush strokes up and down while moving to the left and then also pulling in more of my dark indigo color that hasn't been watered down to thin out the ends of the Northern Lights. I kind of want a gradual fade on both the top and bottom of these auroras. And here I go from the pink I move to the lime green color, and sometimes these northern lights will have one color at the top and then blend to another at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing here, adding more pink to the top above the lime green. Now the key to getting vibrant, pigmented, rich colored backgrounds is pretty much common sense, but this is what I do. I add lots and lots of layers. That's what I end up doing for these Northern Lights. And that's what I do for so many of my other backgrounds, like when I'm painting flowers or leaves. The same goes for clouds or ocean waves or a sunset. It isn't just about the paint, even though that matters. I use Master's Touch and Liquidex for my paint, but it's also about how many layers you add. Now here's a very important part of the technique for this type of background. When I am applying more layers to these auroras, I pick and choose where I want the paint to be real thick, where you can't see that galaxy background, and then other areas I keep thin. So you'll see here I add more pink paint to that watered down pink and white so that I can really pull out those pinks so you want to decide whether it's the top or the middle or the bottom of your auroras that you want to keep in some areas thick and other areas thin. Now, just like I did with the pink, I'm going to pull out the blues, the light blues. That was phthalo cyanin blue with white and then the bottom of that will be thinner. And by the way, who ever said you can't use your hands to paint? I will often use my hand to smooth out an area. Sometimes it works even better than my brush, so why not? Now, most often I see these northern lights being up and down, more vertical, 
a lot of the time they're joined together, but sometimes they're just strips of light that are separate. And then other times they can be creating more of like a squiggly line or just at an angle like this. So with my fluorescent pink and white, I'm gonna turn my hand at a slight angle, brushing back and forth in that upper left-hand corner. And now I'm gonna pull in more of that lime green, but in more thick strips that are still blended together, but some areas are just more highlighted and more rich in color than others. Now, are you starting to notice after adding all these colors, how some areas in our space scene are looking a little too light? We don't want it black, but we also don't want it lighter in value or the same value as these Northern Lights. So what I'm doing here is pushing that space to the back with these darker colors and bringing these Northern Lights forward in front of our space. Now there's six different ways that we can create this depth in our background. And we just use two. We use placement and color as a way to push things forward and push things back. But we could also control size and overlapping and color value, our linear perspective, and also the amount of detail. These are all ways that we can control this illusion of space in our backgrounds. Now here I go, adding yet another couple layers of my lime green. I'll even be using the top of my brush and pulling it up that way it leads to this nice thin fade. And take note to the two strips that I'm bringing down further than the other ones with the lime green. adding yet again more pink fluorescent pink to my pink mixture blending that with more of the indigo mixture for our space and just adding more rich pigment above that lime green area Now be careful of enormous gaps between your northern lights and I have one in this upper left corner. I'm going to add a bit of purple with the leftover pink on my brush and more of this violet and blue mixture but I added more violet to it and it's going to be much darker but still you can see some of that purple with that pink. But then again, I wanna richen up those pinks. I mixed up more of my white and fluorescent pink. And with a little bit less blending this time, I wanted to create those pink strips at the top. All right, so here we're gonna work on that tree. And this is like I said, one of the rare instances where I'll use just black. This is actually going to help us pull this tree into the foreground. Using my Arteza 3-0 spot brush, I'll first create the thin long branches and then tiny little dots for the leaves right along both sides of each line. Now yet another way to create perspective is I'll keep these branches on the 
furthest to the right side higher than the left side branches. Now we'll definitely still be going back to our dark indigo space color again, but if you need to mix more up, it's burnt umber, violet with phthalo cyanin blue. Now it can help to add some much thinner branches that are coming off those larger branches and going in different directions too. All right, so what we're gonna do to really help that background to shine through the trees and all the leaves, because it's not just gonna be all black, is to add a bit of tiny bit of white and phthalocyanin blue into 
our space color of burnt umber, violet, and phthalo cyanide blue. That is the color that will add dots around the bottom base of the branches and sporadic dots around the all black area. Very tiny little dabs here, some spaced very closely together and others spread out. And now it's time to add those white stars. We did a light gray at the beginning, but to really pull forward some of those big, vibrant stars, I'll use just white with my spot brush and reapply this over top some of the current stars, but also make some new ones. And over top the areas where we see just space and not anywhere where we've placed the northern lights. Now less is more here with these white stars. You don't want too many because you really wanna make it look like there's stars in the distance with the stars that we both use light gray on and covered up with those northern lights. Now without going over these white stars or the tree, I'll be reapplying even more layers of color to those northern lights. You're welcome to do that if you want, but I like to really have some of those spots, those strips stand out. So I'll do that again carefully. It's definitely a process. This is not an easy background to create, but it sure does add so much more color and interest to a background. Now I'll take any of your background painting requests. Maybe we can do that in the next tutorial in this series. Again, this series is called Sketchbook Snacks. Now you can see here I add a bit of separation between these two strips. Just be careful that your northern lights don't turn into more like clouds. We don't want that. We want to have these nicely blended, very thin in paint, but colorful strips of light.
And here I go again using my hands to blend those colors out. But guys, I hope you learned a ton from this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial in this series. Thanks for watching. Bye.